Well, joining me now is uh, Israel's ambassador to the United Kingdom, uh, Zippy Hotoveli. Welcome to you. Uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, as you know, has appealed for restraint on both sides. Uh, what, what's Israel's response to that request? Well, first of all, let's describe the situation on the ground. Israel is under attack, under heavy fire from Hamas, a terror organization that is targeting civilians. Uh, I just spoke to my parents. My mother, over 60 years old woman, had to go into a shelter. She lives in the center of Israel, a mm. few minutes away from Tel Aviv. The whole country is under fire. Okay, well, we, Children we, we, are not we, going we to appreciate, school. We appreciate we, that. You need to understand where Israel is standing at the moment. They well, I want need... to talk about that, but I do just want to ask, first of all, about, about what the Prime Minister and, indeed, others in the international community have said. Is, is this the time for Israel to show restraint? No, it's a time to Israel to protect its citizens. And we try to show uh, restraint and to de-escalate the situation. Few days, we did it with all measures possibly can a country, a sovereign country can do. But look at this, synagogues were under fire yesterday well, on, in the heart of bit, Israel. Bit, bit, you cannot ignore the facts. I just you cannot want, ignore well, the facts. I'm not ignoring any facts any, and I want to talk to you any about Any sovereign facts. country... Do you, do you think any the sovereign situation country would have is defended now, citizens. as the United Nations says, moving towards all-out war? United Nations, its duty to say that Hamas is committing a double war crimes. Right. One war crime is they're shooting from civilian areas and the other one they're shooting to civilians. Yeah. So they're committing double yeah, but as, war as crimes. As you well know, the United Nations has repeatedly said that the settlements are illegal in international law and should cease and those are continuing. But they need to condemn terror organisation, which is recognised by well, Britain and by United States, that is now shooting uh, into civilian it, all population All I'm saying is a bit rich to people. say the United Nations should do something when Israel is ignoring what the United Nations has said in the context of settlements. Can I ask you something? What would you do if Britain was under a fire? What would you do well, if London was under fire and rockets were thrown on your house. What would you do? Do you think Britain would have sit in well, silent, not protecting its citizen? Do you expect any sovereign country no, not of to course, protect its of citizens? Of course you can protect citizens. The question is the retaliation uh, and the attacking of civilians in Gaza and elsewhere, which, as we know, once again is leading to disproportionate suffering uh, on the Palestinian side. Well, the, the big disproportional is the fact that a whole country, well, which is Israel, is shattered now, and kids cannot go to school and have yeah. daily routine because kids are under attack no, but, but and schools are under kids attack. Kids in Gaza can't go to school and they're being killed. So tell tell their leadership to stop inside. Well, no, but it's Israel who's... Sending, no, 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 it's sending, the Hamas sending who's sending the, the rockets. It's, it's, it's Hamas who's sending no, the it's rockets. it's Israel which is countering with the Air Force, with the strikes, which you acknowledge are in civilian areas because you blame Hamas for using civilians so, uh, as shields. But it is, I've come back to this, it is disproportionate that there are more people suffering so, on the Palestinian side. Let me side. give you, I'm a jurist by, in my background, so let me give you the international perspective of that by international law. Israel is respecting the international law. According to international law, whenever you're under a war with a terror organization, you can shoot to the targets in order to destroy the facilities of this terror organization. This is what Israel has been doing for the last two days in order to protect even, our citizens. Even if it results in significant civilian casualties. We're doing everything, we are doing everything in our power well, not to be, harm children. But if you, if you stop the but attacks... But we need to protect the Israeli children as well. You, you need to understand. Yeah, but if you stop the attacks, you wouldn't be killing uh, Palestinian children. So you expect women. us just to to have fire on our cities, on our children, and do nothing? Do you expect that from a sovereign nation, not to protect its citizens? This is what you're basically saying. I, I say people who've been victim of terror attacks, countries who've been victim of terror attacks, do not always respond in the way that Israel's responding. Well, I can tell you, and, I've, and it's legitimate. I've seen many countries that yeah. were under terror attacks. They were right. always protecting their and then, citizens. And Definitely a democracy like Israel who protects human yeah. rights. And one of the things we're obligated to do no, is well, to make sure that Israelis won't be under well, fire. Well, you, you say you're acting defensively, but there are those who say that this is a situation that was provoked by the Israeli authorities, by police going into the Al-Aqsa Mosque, by the use of stun grenades, by uh, stopping uh, the uh, free movement in uh, Jerusalem. I'm very of, happy of you're Israeli mentioning people. that because I want to answer this question. Yeah. Hamas, Do you accept that the police overreacted? I want to answer what's happening on the ground and what's the reason we've seen the picture we've seen. For many years, Ramadan month, this holy time of the year, thousands of Muslims were praying and worshipping on Temple Mount. Nothing sure. happened, never in the past, for the last 
many years that Israel has freedom of worship to all religions. What happened this year? So the reason that we've seen this uh, act of violence from Hamas mm -hmm. is because of internal political debate between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority have made a decision no, no, no. Hang on, hang to cancel. On. Wait no, a second. I'm not sure everyone, about, everyone you, is aware of no, the fact. What's the trigger? You said you wanted to talk about what happened in Jerusalem. I'm answering you. I, what's the political aim I'm behind you, the violence? I'm asking you on behalf of the Israeli government, would you accept that uh, there was overreaction and indeed brutality by the Israeli Absolutely police, not. Which was Absolutely not. And I, I can tell you why. Because what is uh, out of proportion is the incitement of Hamas leadership at the moment that is trying to take the leadership of the Palestinian right. people and instead of seeing their leadership or the Palestinian yeah. Authority leadership calling to people to calm down and to stop right. violence, we see the opposite. We see them inciting well, people yes, in but, Israel, but again, the citizens of Israel no, against but Jews. Hang on. We see them calling for holy and religious again, war. I this is what's happening I on the ground. That, Hamas is I, using I, this political yes. crisis in the yes, Palestinian Authority in order to it, harm Israelis yes, and civilians. But I'm asking you about Israel. Is Mr. Netanyahu exploiting this political crisis? As we know, uh, he's only the acting prime minister because of inconclusive elections. He's worried about losing office because of possible prosecutions he might face. And that whipping up a security situation or allowing a very dangerous security situation to take place may be simply a cynical way of saving himself. All political leaders in Israel today want Israel to respond to Hamas aggression and to Hamas attacks on Israeli civilians because this is what every country wants. Not have in done. the way that it's so, going on. No, in a way, actually, actually, I mean, you know, actually some people Israeli say newspapers. we're being too gentle. Some people say we're being too gentle. As long right. as our, our cities are still under fire, we're being probably too gentle because we need to stop those rockets being fired on our cities and our civilians and our children. Right. And I, I, let me share with you a personal story. I'm a mother for young children. And I remember myself sitting in the middle of Israel. I live in Rehovot. It's yeah. where the Weizmann Institute is. It's a very famous city. I remember myself taking my baby daughter to no. a shelter because Hamas was shooting no, rockets likewise, in the middle, likewise, in the heart you of know Israel. very well, Palestinian families with children remember being forcibly evicted. They know that the law as it's currently being applied to the claiming of property in East Jerusalem is biased against uh, the Palestinians. Basically, they have no rights and Jewish people you do You cannot have, do, buy this do, excuse. Do, do You're too right. serious for that. You know that this no. being a, a legal case has been going on for years. So it yeah. cannot be the trigger this year, isn't it? Because this is a legal case that Israel has asked the court not to, not, not to actually give a verdict now because yeah. it, the tension is so big. But I can tell you, this is a legal no. decision. No. It's been going on you, for years. But, so it cannot no, be the trigger. The the real trigger is the political debate is, between the Palestinian Authority and no, Hamas. But it also stands, doesn't it, that the two-state solution cannot be possible so long as the settlement programme continues and, and the claiming of East Jerusalem, can it? Look at Gaza. Hamas is shooting from Gaza. No settlements in Gaza, as you know, because Israel withdrew in 2005. What was the result? More radicals took over and they're shooting rockets on the heart of Israel. They're shooting yeah. rockets on Tel Aviv. Do no, you think Tel Aviv is a settlement? What I'm saying is there are radicals on both sides, settlement? aren't there? There's provocative behaviour by the Israeli police, arguably uh, supported by uh, the Netanyahu regime. And we've, we've seen the demonstrators on the streets saying, you know, kill the Jews, kill, kill the Arabs. Uh, Jewish Actually, it's the Arabs that. calling kill the Jews. You, no, you weren't, I, you no, weren't saying all, something also, by mistake. And also Israeli Jews saying kill the Arabs, get the Arabs out. I can tell you that whoever says kill someone, this is the role of the police to take them into prison because this is illegal. But if you're well, coming back to the how, how many Jewish people have been arrested? All I can tell you that we, we have equal law. Police, we, have, we, have, have we have arrested? equal law for everyone, and everyone who's doing a, a violent protest is being in jail. Right. But I can tell you that at the moment, the provocators are the leaders of Hamas, a cruel terror organization that is trying to kill right. my children, my brothers who are, okay. who are sitting in shelters so, at the moment. So this confrontation just goes on, right? No, it can, it can stop. The minute Hamas stops shooting rockets on our cities, Israel wants to live in peace. As you know, we, we've been living in coexistence for years. Let me tell you another personal story. I grew up in Lod, this city that we saw those marches yesterday, those yeah. synagogues going on sure. fire. For many years, Jews and Arabs lived completely in peace. What happened? It's Hamas inciting those people, or the citizens okay. of Israel, instead of living right. in coexistence to the opposite, to act in violence, to commit crimes, to uh, right. put synagogues in okay. fire. Um, those are, this is vandalism against holy sites. All right. Those I are things that. no it, sovereign country I mean, can accept. It, it has to be said, as a diplomat, you're not really offering much diplomacy, are you? I'm offering justice. I'm offering the justice of my country. What I'm offering at the moment is make sure that 
everyone in Britain will say, what would I do if rockets were firing to London? And I believe more, most British people, as a democratic society that cares about human rights, would have said, no country can tolerate rockets being fired on children's uh, schools and, and kindergartens. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Let's hope the situation can be resolved.